Welcome to episode four of the master plan. So in this series, I've laid out the future of my landscape at my home here. We are now on item three here in ground irrigation. Um, so this is an enabler for four and five, which is a leveling of my lawn, a sand cap and leveling. Um, so I want to this in-ground irrigation trenching, everything's going to mess up my lawn pretty good. So after I do that, I'm going to wait till after I do that to do the sand cap leveling, get a nice level lawn. Um, and then the big one here is potential renovation. And that means killing parts of my lawn or, or possibly all of it. We'll see. Um, and planting a new variety of grass. Um, so I've noticed some things that I'm, I'm not quite liking uh with my current grass so i might change species and obviously having in-ground irrigation and the ability um, to water will make it much easier to start the new lawn from seed versus dragon sprinklers all over. so i've been busy procuring components for this in-ground irrigation system you see um, i've got some pex tubing some copper tubing all these components, um, zone valves I went with. So these are anti-siphon um, backflow, backflow prevention along with zone control all in one. Um, and you can see here, this is what I'm planning on doing is basically installing those above ground and using one of those hollow rocks to go over it. So I've chosen to use this um, for a couple different reasons. I've got some big elevation changes that I outlined in the design episode but I need to remote locate um, three of these at the highest part of the lawn to make sure they're above every sprinkler. Um, so anyway, it just, I thought it worked out better to do these instead of um, a separate backflow, backflow prevention with the zone valves in the boxes in the ground. I thought access, you know, it's, it's easy to uh, pick this rock up change one out if I need it, or if it's not working, look at the wiring cycle it manually. Anyway, I just thought that was a cool idea. So I went with those. Um, I went with this Beehive uh, by Orbit. Uh, the big thing I wanted in here was Wi-Fi. Anyway, this one's up to six. Um, so I've got six zones planned, so I plan on using all of those. But before I open this and do anything, I'm going to make sure I've got... Um, the flow requirements accurate. It doesn't say on here, but I believe these are um, 3.2 gallons per minute um, that each one of these rotors uses. So I've I've put eight to nine per zone, assuming I have 37 gallons per minute uh, from my one inch supply. But before I do anything, as far as putting those in the ground or putting valves in or opening this controller um i want to verify that flow rate to make sure i can truly supply eight or nine of those heads um, if i can't obviously my design is going to have to change i'm going to have to add zones so that controller would not allow me to do that i'd have to go up to a nine zone controller probably but that's something to keep in mind um so enough talking those are components um so I've spent on, on, the, on the components to tap into the supply. Um, you know, I need these big isolation valves and stuff like that. It, it adds up at probably $120 on those components. And then actual components, um, the sprinkler heads, the valves, the uh, controller so far has been about $300. So I'll keep you updated on the cost here so you get an idea if you were to do this, what it would cost you. Um, but obviously I'm, I'm a long way from getting done there. So it's say $400, 450 round up, whatever, $450. Um, what I've got so far, I still need all the irrigation tubing. I need to rent a trencher. Um, I need to control wiring for these components. So, all right, let's get something done. Okay. This is the general area where I, my water supply is in the house. I'm outside of the house, obviously, and I'm trying to locate where I want this pipe to come out. So I've got an existing water spout here. I know right where this is in the basement. And I would like to put these valves behind this bush. Um, 
I plan on putting a, a hollow rock, one of those fake rocks or, or something over it anyway, but I'd still like to hide it behind this bush even. Um, so that means, uh, and then make sure I'm out of the way of this hose reel. So if I measure over three feet would put me, um, uh, right over here, plenty of clearance from this. And then I can put my valve bank on the left side here and right behind this bush. So, um, we're going to go in the house and put a penetration three feet over from this existing water spout. All right, I'm back in the basement here. Up here, hard to see. Um, this copper going to the outside, and I'm tapping here, is that external water spout. So we need to go over this way, three feet to do our penetration. Um, the water supply you can see comes here, and then uh, turns the corner and comes over here. So I'm going to put a T in here and run this straight out. Okay, so I've got foam on the wall there. Just got to clean out the end of this where we're going to put the Put the hole through the wall. All right, let's put a hole in this sucker. Right, let's see what we can do to extend our hole saw here. Take two. Bob View always made it look so easy, didn't he? We're right on track. Everything's uh, taking five times as long as you think it should. But anyway, we've got our, our little pilot hole coming through here, so I'm going to Finish it up with the hole saw on the outside here. All right, there we have it. Success. We've got a big boy wall penetration. Look at that. Perfect fit. Um, I want room for those valves. But I think if we go about six inches out I think that should be about perfect all right so what we need to do in here is measure for I'm gonna put this T and the shutoff valve to basically have a drain in here and then an air air fitting to blow out in winter but this is obviously very important it gets 20 below air temperature here in the middle of winter um, not wind chill either, folks. Air temperature gets to be 20 below. So we need to have this provision here. All right, just pressurized, check for leaks, no leaks, good to go. We've got our isolation valve in here, coming from our main line here, over to our copper that's running outside with a drop leg for a, with an isolation valve for a drain. Go. There we go, just took all afternoon, but uh, we got our water supply. All right, so hidden behind my bush here, you can see I've got my copper finished coming out. I've got a bit of a riser on there to make sure I am about, I think I ended up about 14 inches above the stone here, but that's just to make sure my backflow valves are high enough above the sprinkler head for these zones one, three. Um, you can see I've got my transition to PVC started there, so I'm from there I'm going to put my valve manifold, zone control valves, and a straight through for zones 4, 5, and 6 that need a water supply. Here's my original plan that I detailed in the last episode, but you can see here I've completed my water supply and I came through and instead I actually put a riser up, but now it's time to make 
this manifold. And so what I've got mocked up right here is going to be uh, my manifold. You can see I'm just mocking it up to make sure I've got enough space between the valves here so I can, their threaded connection, so I can spin them off in the event that I have to replace one. So you can see I kind of mock that out to make sure I've got enough swing radius for those valves. Um, so the water supply here is, is gonna come. I'm gonna run this parallel to the house. I've gotta cut my lengths of one inch pipe to fit in here, but um, here's what I've got now. I have an isolation valve. For the water supply, that's just gonna go straight through to uh, the zone valves for four or five and six. All right, I've got my manifold finished up here with my valves mounted up. I think it uh, turned out pretty good. So I've got the uh, supply gonna come in here. I've got the provision for the straight through with the isolation valve to go to the other zone control valves. I'm getting excited. It's actually starting to starting to look like something here. So um, I'm gonna glue this directly on to the supply pipe out there. Um, and then I can pressure test things to make sure I don't have any leaks here. Valve manifold wants to rotate. I'm gonna get this level and just measure. I'll put a uh, temporary leg on here. And then we'll do some pressure testing and I'll check the flow out of one of these valves just to make sure um, our zones, our number of sprinkler heads we can actually support for each one of our zones. We All right, things are looking pretty freaking sweet. All right, here's the big moment of truth. Pressurize. Well, that's a good sign. The flow stopped. Everything's actually looking pretty good in here. So we'll go outside and take a look. All right, leak check here. Everything on the ground looks dry. Awesome. Take a look at the copper. Oh, I've got a little leak here. It looks like coming from this uh, valve here. So that should be easy to fix. We should be able to just tighten this valve up one more, one more spin. I'm filming right now. Oh, sorry. But... Tighten that up. That should take care of that leak. All right, now I'm gonna do a bucket test, see how much flow we're getting out of these valves to verify if we can really run eight or nine sprinkler heads in one zone. So. We got some flowage there. So I got just under 15 seconds, but I think I had two or three seconds on the clock before I started. I forgot these are flow control valves, so I've got this little tool here um, to adjust the flow on the valves. So I, I'm gonna verify that these things um, are wide open. <laughs> and, re and if it's not, I need to redo my bucket test. But anyway, um, it looks like I have enough flow, but I'm gonna see what I'm actually at. I'd feel better if there's even more of a buffer here and then I can throttle things down by zone to make sure there's no misting on the valves um, and they spray nicely. So let's, uh, let's see.
I was not all the way out on that, so I backed that out again. <laughs> Let's run our test again. All right, so I was at four seconds again when I uh, actually got the valve on. Didn't make much of a difference. Um, so I had 13.7, I think I had 13 and a half last time. So that puts us nine and a half seconds again to fill the bucket. So still uh, just over 30 gallons per minute. And like I said, I've got nine for the most, which is three gallons per valve, 27 gallons per minute. So I've got some headroom, um, still good to go. And I'm glad I've got the ability to full control. That's one of the reasons I went with these. And uh, being up top here, I can visually see, you know, while I adjust these down and get them, get them dialed in. So um, I think I'm perfect. So I've got the spy done in the house. Did the leak check, everything's great. Uh, got the leak check out here. So next thing, I just have to uh, get some piping in the ground, some sprinkler heads and start blasting some water to it. Oh, I've got to get the wiring into the house and uh, get the controller set up. Uh, minor details, right? So anyway, um, next thing is probably get the wiring into where I'm gonna put the controller in the house so I can caulk here and, and foam on the inside and make sure my penetration's sealed here. But then onto the distribution piping and sprinkler heads. 